I just want to pick up on what you're saying about um, the political process and ways that can be amended to make uh, legislation less um, uh, productive uncertainty. Um, your own uh, document uh, slides showed quite eloquently how bad polarization has gotten right now. So if we sort of lay down as our marker that legislation must be, big legislation must be bipartisan, you're essentially handing a veto over to the minority party. And this is a growing problem. The 2003 tax cuts were also passed, I think, almost entirely on party line vote. Uh, and the Democrats spent the next ten, have spent every year since then trying to roll them back. So we're sort of stuck in this situation that um, since neither party wants to give the other side a veto, and the uh, structure has not allowed the coalition building that used to create these bipartisan majorities. I, I don't really know what the solution is. Um, I, I would offer two very minor possible policy things we could do that to help the process along. One is when this, uh, with the help of your research, maybe the Congressional Budget Office, when it scores legislation, could actually include as part of their score, you know, what the uh, economic consequences are of any uncertainty involved in the implementation of this legislation might be. Similarly, when the White House Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs does its review of pending federal regulation, they could include that as part of their cost-benefit analysis. Um, Mike Greenstone of the uh, uh, Brookings Institution has suggested that we have a Congressional Regulatory Office which would actually score all new federal rules uh, based on rigorous cost-benefit analysis that is not subject to constant partisan quarreling about whether or not these rules are really worthwhile. I'm a big believer that the more better uh, objective information we have, the better policies we'll have. That won't fix all the problems, but it might get us uh, partly there. I want to make one final last observation, um, which goes to this question of um, what's necessary versus unnecessary policy uncertainty that all three of us have been discussing. If you go back to 2003 and the invasion of Iraq, um, most of us thought that it was probably necessary because we were all pretty convinced Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction, and we now know in retrospect that that was actually unnecessary policy uncertainty. I'm, like you, Steve, I think that the debt ceiling debate we had last year was destructive and unhelpful. But what if next year we get a grand bargain that fixes entitlements and taxes, and, there be, and it was because of the debt ceiling which gave us a fiscal cliff? Maybe we'll look back and say, hey, that was necessary <laughs> and worthwhile uncertainty. So that's one final observation. <laughs>